Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Guy Jeremiah, and I want to talk this afternoon about our Aquatina collapsible pocket bottle and our Find a Fountain project. Um, really, we've tried to overcome the problem of always having to buy bottled water when you're out and about. A, because you don't want to carry around a large bottle, so this collapsible bottle stays in your pocket. But secondly, there's nowhere to fill up your bottle, so we want to identify all the free water sources in the world eventually. So I'm going to show you how we plan to do that. And we're going to kick off with a movie. Being nearly two-thirds water means we humans need to top up regularly. In the past, this meant finding a stream, a pond, or digging a well. Then, with the Industrial Revolution, the water came to us. In recent years, however, once again, our hydration habits have changed. Today, we drink 200 billion litres of water every year. What a healthy species we are. Marvellous. Or is it? You see, all that mineral water comes with a cost, an environmental cost. It takes seven litres of water and a quarter litre of oil to produce one litre of bottled water. Or, to put it another way, the production and transportation of bottled water emits more than three million tonnes of CO2 into the atmosphere every year. That's the same weight as 400,000 London buses. Every year, we throw away enough plastic bottles to circle the world over 1,000 times. The majority end up in landfills, taking centuries to decay. Clearly, we need to turn back to the tap. So why don't we? Partly because it's easier to step into a shop than search for a water fountain. And if you're clever enough to find a fountain, it's unlikely you'll have a bottle or a cup with you to fill. Aquatina overcomes these problems. Aquatina is a reusable bottle that, when empty, will collapse to fit into a pocket or handbag. So like your keys or a mobile phone, you can always have it with you. When you're thirsty, simply type your location into findafountain.org and it'll show you where you can fill your Aquatina for free. It's time we woke up to the damage caused by bottled water. It's time we changed our hydration habits and embraced environmentally sustainable water for the good of the planet. It's time we said goodbye to bottled water and hello to Aquatina. Okay, I want to give you a background to the project we're doing in London and then uh, talk about how we can spread that around the UK and hopefully around the world. So starting with London, we throw away 375 million plastic bottles every year. And around the world, as you saw in that movie, it's 150 billion bottles every year. So who are we? What is Aquatina and Find a Fountain? We're a combination of two organisations. So collectively, we're looking to address the problems of water availability and the convenient containers. So the convenient containers, when I first had the idea, the reason I wouldn't carry a bottle around with me was because they were all too bulky. So I thought if we could somehow make a compressible bottle that you could always have with you, you could keep it in your pocket, in your bag, that would be half the problem. So Aquatina is, is that, convenient small bottle. Um, an awful lot harder to make than we first imagined, but we got there in the end. Um, so it's an ethical business. We're planning to put 10% of our profits into the Find a Fountain campaign. The Find a Fountain campaign is a not-for-profit social enterprise that will campaign to make drinking water more accessible and by promoting the installation of fountains and mapping them online. Now, we're actually now working in partnership with the Drinking Fountain Association. They were set up in 1859 uh, to tackle a very similar problem. They had, um, you know, the, the, the rivers were full of cholera, litter, and there was no drinking water. So somebody s said, you know, if anybody can 
create a glass of water fit to drink, then it'll be the greatest thing at the great exhibition of that time. So they've sort of gone into decline largely over the 80s since bottled water's come in. And now we're really hoping with the Find a Fountain campaign to get them moving again, to get fountains back on the street, to get philanthropists involved in funding these fountains. We're not expecting the government or um, the local authorities to do it because, as we all know, there is no money at the moment. So a background to this. Fountains around the world. In Rome, they've got 2,000 working drinking water fountains on the streets, all beautiful, and they're all very proud of them, and people will use those fountains. In Paris... They have 78 Wallace fountains, designed by Charles Auguste Liborg, and named after, bizarrely, after an Englishman named Richard Wallace, who financed their construction. So they're very much the sort of iconic image of uh, Paris. Something we don't have. We don't have a specific fountain that relates to London. Not yet, anyway. So we're wor working with the Metropolitan Drinking Fountain and Cattle Trough Association. If you walk around London, you'll see a lot of those troughs that generally have got tulips and things in them now. But you will surprisingly see a lot of fountains that are still working. We assumed they were all not working anymore and you know, completely defunct, but there's a lot that are working, so I'll be showing that in a moment. So they were established in 1859 to promote the provision of drinking water. Prince Albert was a big supporter. In 1859, he wrote a letter supporting what they were doing and trying to, to encourage them. And then a bit later, one of the, a Princess of Wales became their patron. And we've actually been in touch with the Prince's Charities, and there's a lot of support from there. In fact, Prince Charles walked onto our stand and declared this to be genius. So, uh, so we hope maybe he'll get behind it and help us um, bring fountains back. So, find a fountain. It, we began mapping them last summer, whilst we waited patiently for this uh, bottle to be made. Um, we put out freedom of information requests to pretty much every council in the UK and it must have been an awful lot of time that they were then obliged to spend pouring through their records and we got some great responses uh, we've mapped all of those, 459 we don't know where they all are in detail but what we did do was visit pretty much every London fountain so we cycled round and photographed 57 fountains that we found 25 of them were working not a great deal but possibly more than, than we expected and we also found 32 broken fountains, including the troughs and everything else. Uh, we have got many more to find, though. You know, we had these FOIs that will tell us roughly where they are. But there's an awful lot. You know, ice rinks will have a, um, a fountain or various other places will have fountains. Anywhere where water is publicly available. I mean, even a bank. They might not particularly want to be on there, but if it's a public space and they've got a cooler, then we'd like to map those. So the kind of things, these are, these are a map of the, the drinking fountains we've got. The Royal Parks are actually quite good, and they're going to get even better because there's more fountains coming this year. Um, you can see them up there. The red ones are the broken ones, and the blue ones are the working fountains. And that fountain was put in September before last, and that was uh, uh, the Freeman family fountain. He sponsored it. He was, a, he was a jogger, annoyed at the lack of water fountains. So he put in, had this designed, and it's an amazing new fountain at various different levels. Uh, and I went to the the launch of that fountain. So there are, t there are plans in London. Uh, the Royal Parks fountains, there should be two nice pictures of Royal Parks and for some reason they haven't come through. Um, so the Royal Parks got a sponsorship from Tiffany's, the jewellers, and they're going to put 40 fountains across the Royal Parks and they've designed, they had a competition last autumn uh, to try and find an iconic London fountain. So when I said there was the Wallace fountains in Paris, they're trying to get something similar in London. And those two hidden pictures are... One is a, it's like a big slab of granite with three circles in it. It's called the watering holes. And one of the holes is at adult height, one's at children and wheelchair height, and then one's for dogs. And it looks amazing. They're real sculptures, but they're, you, know, you have a certain amount of planning permission. You can't put them anywhere around the place. So whilst they look fantastic, they're a bit harder to put in. So they also had a second fountain, which is like an upturned trumpet, sort of brass trumpet with the water coming out of the top. Much simpler, and none of these are desperately expensive to put in. Some two and a half thousand pounds, maybe five thousand pounds to install them, uh, which is not a great deal. And we think there's a lot of people out there that maybe, rather than a, well, when I go, I don't want a park bench in my memory, I want a fountain. 
you know, somewhere where people come around are sort of living. Not that that sounds a little egotistical, perhaps, but um, nevertheless, I want. I, th I think that's the kind of thing that people would be really keen to do. 